So they can be used in medical simulations or visualization in scientific fields, like how to visualize certain data and all that. And some computer-aided designing in which you can design models in a computer. And, uh, and there are other applications in image processing and also in photography. So computer graphics is not a secluded or a separate field in itself. It is, it is a definitely a big area, but it also shares many of an aspects with very uh, with many different fields. So, for example, image processing. So, what is image processing? It is, uh, it is a process in which you, given an image, you try to process the pixels of an image. For example, you want to do some image enhancements like changing the contrast or changing the brightness of an image and you want to do morphing between two or three different images. So this is this general area is called image processing and there is no uh, like a line dividing saying that, okay, this is computer graphics and this is image processing. Usually these areas do have a big overlap and they work hand in hand. And similarly, you must have heard about computer vision. So computer vision is treated as inverse of computer graphics. So what is computer vision? What we are trying to say in computer vision is that we are trying to capture what a human person sees through his eyes. Like for example, if you see something, it is not just an image. You know that this is a computer, this is a person talking in front of you. So you, you have a lot of semantic data. And that is what computer vision aims at. Like given an image, it tries to decipher what is the seen information from the images. And this is exactly the reverse of what I'm talking about computer graphics. That you want to do the opposite thing. That you want to create certain hypothetical uh, virtual world and then create an image out of it. So on a very high level sense, these are two complementary, but still they have they overlap in certain respects. And then uh, there is a field called robotics in which the primary aim is to uh, have robot and control robot movements. So you uh, you might know about robots which are uh, which nowadays can walk very well, they can run and all. So robotics. Uh, so the research in field of robotics also shares something in computer graphics, because in computer graphics you want to animate some human character. So for example, in all the movies that you would see, you definitely would have some human or human-like characters, right? So to synthesize motion for these characters, you would uh, need some sort of control algorithm to say that how this character will move and following the laws of physics and everything. So there is a definitely a big overlap between these two fields. And then there is something called virtual reality. The so virtual reality is basically overlaying some artificial information on the real world scene. So what happens is like you wear some sort of a, like this is one example that you, you wear some uh, goggles on your eye and it, it is more like a, a computer screen in which what you see, depending on what you're seeing through those goggles, it can project certain objects. So uh, it will give you an impression that, uh, if, uh, that there is something kept on the table, even if it is not, and it is just an image on your eye. So that is called virtual reality, and obviously it has a uh, lot more, lot common with computer graphics. So, uh, so anybody has any questions, anything? Like, you know, just want to, you know, basically people are just uh, sitting there, and then, you know, if you have any questions, you can ask now, or else uh, we can, you know, proceed. So no, uh, no questions so far? Yeah. 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 What happens? No, no. Can you can you tell me the question, please? you already have some data and you try to 
work on that. So for example, if I give you an image of my cell, all you can do is try to maybe paint something on my face or try to improve the contrast of an image, right? But if I give you a camera, you can click different pictures of different people. And similarly, in computer graphics, you can try to create different images based on different scene information. So I hope the answer is clear. So what is the question? No, yeah, I, I understand sky fiber. Can you just complete the question? So what is sky fiber? Okay. Uh, so I think sky fiber technology is not really a technology. It is more like the content. Sci fi means science. I think what you mean is science fiction, right? Or is that correct? We mean sci fi we mean by science fiction that I'm Okay, so science fiction is again, it is a kind of thing that you want to generate in computer graphics. That you want to create something which is uh, which is fictional, which is not true. So that's why computer graphics come into picture that you have the power of generating something which is not seen in the real world. And that is what is called science fiction. Like maybe after 20 years, some, someone, you actually see that, but it's not necessary. It, it is a purely a matter of imagination that how can science I mean, how will science be in like, let's say 50 years from now? And that's called science fiction. And using computer graphics, you can pretty much generate anything you want. You can change the laws of physics. You can generate images or movies, which, which you can't see in the real world. Okay, sir. Thank you. One more question, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, myself, Kuldeep. Uh, our question is that, sir, can you, sir, so what is how uh, how to impl uh, implement the concept of fractals in the computer graphics? Uh, okay, so that is a very specific question. Uh, so fractals is again it is some it is a mathematical concept. I mean, uh, on top of my head, all I can say that is it is uh, it okay. So it falls under a certain area called proce procedural generation of, of the, uh, thing. So what you have is you have some sort of a formula or or some sort of a procedure to keep generating a new thing. And fractals is like just one example of that. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so computer graphics, I mean, fractals can be used to generate like object. People have used to uh, have used fractals to generate some uh, very intricate objects like trees in the real world scene that because trees are so, uh, you have like so many branches, you have so many leaves, it is hard to like manually uh, put everything and still it make it look very real. So fractals can be used in some these kind of things to generate very high fidelity uh, procedural stuff. Yeah, that's all I can say right now. Okay, so are there any more questions? Uh, I think I think we can go ahead. Uh, if they have, they can ask later. Okay, so let me uh, try to classify different fields or different sub areas in computer graphics. So first is, uh, let's say, geometry and modeling. Like, like I was talking a couple of slides before, that you need to define the geometry of the objects that you want to uh, render in the scene. So this all this involves the shapes and the objects that you want to uh, generate. So then the next step is, uh, Illumination and rendering. So illumination means what kind of lighting information and how does light uh, affect the scene, right? And rendering is, as I explained earlier, it is a process of collecting the, all this information and generating an image out of it. And then uh, the other aspect is animation or simulation. So animation means that you want to animate or produce motion for some of the objects. And simulation means it's usually physics-based that for example, if you want to simulate a, a ball falling on the floor, so that is called simulation because you need to follow the laws of physics to generate motion. And it cannot be like arbitrary motion. If the ball is uh, in the air, it will obviously fall down. And that's what you simulate the laws of physics. Rather, because you in, in a computer, you, uh, uh, you have to specify something so that it follows the physics and 
everyday world that you see around yourself. And there are other things such as uh, water, fluids, uh, cloth, or fire, which is very hard to specify by hand. So you need some. You need to implement uh, laws of physics for all these uh, phenomena so that you can simulate it easily. And then there is a uh, other aspect which is purely based on 2D data, which is something like texture. So texture means it is some sort of a pattern that you can use use to cover. A, uh, let's say you have a wallpaper or you have you have the wood on your dining table, right? So that is like a texture. It's not like a flat one color. It can have any any pattern on it. And there is a, a like I, like I talked about image processing and videos. So all this like a you can group them together in one sub area. So you basically directly work on pixel level and you modify images and videos. So the first three topics that I talk about, it is usually going from defining a 3D world around you, the so three-dimensional world, and then making a two-dimensional image out of it. And this part directly deals with two-dimensional two uh, data, more or less. 